Join us, CY and myself now is in the middle right here, Josiah Gray from the Washington Nationals All-Star Pitcher. Give me some All-Star. <laughs> and then the veteran down here himself, Mr. Marvin Freeman. All-Star yourself, wasn't you? Every time I come out, I'm an All-Star. Thank right. you. That's right. Thank you. OG. All right, so CY, we want to talk to these guys not just about being a, a black pitcher, but just a pitcher in itself. Right. Let's dive into this subject right now because there's less than – 10 starters in the big leagues. Kids don't have people to look up to. Like when I was growing up, there was Bob Gibson. There was all kinds of guys that you look to. Marvin, since you're the older of the group of the pitchers, who were some of the guys you looked at when you were um, coming up? You know, since we're pretty much almost the same age, Bob yes. Gibson, Ferguson Jenkins, J.R. Richards. I like big, tall pitchers because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an average size guy myself. Yeah. So just looking at those guys gave me, you know, the – the impression that I can do it too. So when you see it, you can be it. That was my um, motto growing up. So seeing those guys, making me go out and work on my game, trying to emulate some of the things that they did, imitating their mechanics, trying to you know mimic their breaking pitches and stuff like that, it made me feel like I can do it too. So just seeing it actually gave me the, you know, the, the confidence that I can be that type of guy as well. So Josiah, hearing that, yeah. I'm curious two things. Who were you looking at? Mm -hmm. And do you feel like I got people looking at me? Because there's so few now. Yeah, for me, it was looking at, you know, guys like Marcus Stroman, Chris Archer. You know, Marcus Stroman, similar stories, two-way guys, New York guys. And similar, you know, the smaller stature guys. You know, Marvin talks about the bigger guys, but I always looked at the smaller guys. And then Chris Archer, um, in growing up a Yankee fan, they played the Rays forever. So I would always see him dicing it up and really enjoyed, you know, watching those two guys. And then, yeah, I feel like guys are looking up to me to say, hey, I want to be Josiah Gray or, or Hunter Green or any of the young black starters because I think we're leaving a good example and a good impression that they can do this. They can be the next generation that's going to have, you know, their name and, and kids follow them for years to come. I'm curious, you brought up Archer and you brought up Stroman. Because those two had personality on the mound, right? Absolutely. They'd drive somebody out, they hop, and they skip, <laughs> and, and people are going, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. You know, see why? When you, when, you, when, you, when you hear those names, isn't that what jumps out to you? It does jump out to me, but what jumps out to me is that's, that's always happened. I'm sure Bob Gibson had that. CeCe Sabathia had that. Yeah. Dave Stewart had that presence on the mound. Mm -hmm. When I go back and look at videos of, of some of the legends of before pitching, they all had that extra chip on their shoulder when they were on the mound, and you felt that as an opponent or just with them standing out there on the mound. And I think that's what part of being a black pitcher comes with. I, th I, think, I think embracing that and, and bringing that out on the mound is, is what makes us special. But Marvin, sure. you've been around now coaching and everything else. Do they get, does that hurt them having personality too? Because our game can be so rigid. Um, At times. I, I like to make sure that they have it in the right perspective. I can't strike a guy out in the first inning and jump around on the mound like it's the last at bat he's going to have because he's going <laughs> to take that back to the dugout with him. He's going to try a little harder next time. Yeah. But it's going to make me have to make better pitches if I put that type of pressure on myself from over-exaggerating success. Now, I always say, look, if I strike you out, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you out. So mm -hmm. why should I act like I'm the most surprised person on the field? So I just go about my business, get to the next guy. But if it's the last inning, I'm going to do a backflip off the mound if I have to. <laughs> you know, if the game's over with and I'm out there standing, I'm the last man standing, yeah, I'm moonwalking off the mound. So, you know, those things are, are – there's a time and a place for that. Some guys like to do it. And we're in an era now where the social media and everything, you want to get your likes up. And sometimes guys do some really outrageous things. I see guys getting a base hit. They're on second base, beating the chest. I'm like, dude, okay, all right. When I get you on this one, I'm going to beat my chest. Yeah. So one thing is going to give and one is going to give in, in turn. So, you know, the give and take is where we're at. So if you can't stand the smoke, get up out of there. But I always like pitching because it's, you know, it's the only, only position on the field that's on the stage. Everything else is flat. The mound is elevated. Everybody's looking at the pitcher. He's number one in the scorecard. Why wouldn't you want to pitch? And plus, hitters aren't the smartest guys in the world, so you can always exploit them. So that was my approach, and that's why I love pitching so much. All right, Marvin, Josiah, now let's talk about the relationship, because it seems like you guys have a close-knit bond. 
because you did meet at such an early age from Josiah, you playing in the Breakthrough Series years mm -hmm. ago. Now at this point in your career, even though you have major league coaches and staff that are there to help you out, how often will you go back to some of the lessons that were taught to you at the very root level? I think for me it, it comes down to, to what I see on social media now for Marvin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've stayed in touch <laughs> ever since, stone. and everything he puts out there is phenomenal. So mm -hmm. I always look at that, like the little tip snippets all the time to just see how can I use this to improve my game that day. Maybe it's something I'm not thinking about, maybe it's something I'm lacking, anything in that sort of department because, you know, through the course of a six, seven month season, you just forget things. So I think Marvin dumbs it down to where all the kids can learn it at an easy pace and understand that, you know, progress doesn't happen overnight. Progress is gonna happen by being consistent and showing up to work every day. So. Um, you know, obviously everything he, he posts is, is phenomenal, and I, I definitely learned from everything that is out there. Yeah, and Marvin, how much are you following all the young players who come up and you're able to put your hands on at some point in their career? How much are you following them throughout their journey to the big leagues? I'll check in with them, make sure they're doing okay. If I see something they're doing in the mechanics, I might make a suggestion, ask them what are they doing on the side, what are they working on. That way I can kind of just keep them you know, fresh to the fact that the things that got you there, you still got to be able to do those things, but also remind them when they start getting a little bit off track. But mostly the big league guys, I just congratulate them when they get that W, yeah. man. I'm, I'm just so happy to see somebody out there getting it. You know, it's, it's just a pleasure being able to have those guys in one big circle that we can continue to communicate with each other, even though we're not even in the same cities. I love it, I love it, I love yeah. it. Making a difference. All right, Josiah, Absolutely. go get him this year, man, okay? Absolutely, you know it. Marvin, thank you for your impact. Yeah, no buddy, doubt. Like Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate